Hi, folks. It's Andy, the Analytical Preacher. I addressed a question recently. I thought it was a really good question and a good topic for a podcast. And the question was this. They said, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every way, just as we are. But how could that be when he wasn't tempted? Their examples were he wasn't tempted with things like oxycodone, internet pornography, or a million other modern pitfalls that we're all subjected to seemingly on a daily basis. All right, to answer that question, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is go to Hebrews chapter 4, look at the verse that they were referring to about Christ being tempted in the same ways that we were and yet being without sin. And then we'll break down, uh, do some definitions and things that we need to always do when we look at Scripture. So Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14, 15, and 16 say this, Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Obviously, the phrase that we have to key in on here is the phrase that says every respect. That's the English standard translation. Some other translations will say, but one who in all things was tempted as we are yet without sin. So that there's a single Greek word that is being translated in some places as every respect, in some places as all things here in Hebrews 4. Here's what we want to look at. In the New Testament, that word is used a number of different times. And the word in the Greek has really two basic meanings. One of those meanings is everyone or all of them. So if there's 100 students in the class, we are literally talking about all 100 students. But actually, that's the definition that's rarely used in the New Testament. Much more often, that word that's getting translated as every respect or all things in the New Testament is actually used to mean some of all those types or one from each category, which is why I like the translation in every respect better than I like the translation of all things. I think this idea of Christ was tempted in every respect as we are fits the real use of that Greek word. So the writer is saying we have a high priest who has been tempted by something in each of these major biblical categories in how humans are tempted, just as each of us has been, yet Jesus did it without sin. So I think the biggest issue there is it's not saying every single possible sin. Yes, in different time periods and in different cultures down through history, individuals have faced different temptations. What the Bible is saying is, though, in some respect, there are just these very high-level categories. So what we need to do then is say, what are these high-level categories? Does the Bible define these high-level categories in a way that we can understand them? The answer, of course, is absolutely yes. I think the cleanest place to find it is in John's first letter. So in the back of the New Testament, in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17, I think John gives us the cleanest version of what are these categories under which Jesus was tempted and under which each of us become tempted. So 1 John 2, 15 to 17 says this, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, And the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. So in the book of James, James tells us that the reason a test might become a temptation for us is because of the desires that we have inside. If we have evil, sinful desires inside, then things outside to us can lead us to trip and fall into sin. What, again, James doesn't say specifically what those are, but John does here in his are the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
different commentators define these things different ways, but it's the desire of the flesh is this desire for physical or for sexual satisfaction. It's the desire for pleasure. The desire of the eyes is this vanity. It's the desire for popularity or the desire for control of people or things, covetousness, etc. And the pride of life is just that. It's pride. It's the want, the desire for power. It's the arrogance that we're better than others. And it's because we have desires for those types of pleasures and vanity and pride that allows things outside of us to tempt us and trip us into sin. We see and we know that these are the main categories of which the Bible is speaking because we actually see them first play out in the temptation of Eve in the Garden of Eden. Let me read Genesis 3.6 to see what Eve's response was to the serpent. Genesis 3.6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, could solve a physical pleasure, I'm hungry, that it was a delight to the eyes. She was already being swayed by vanity. She already wanted brand names. She wanted nice things. And that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. It would puff up her pride, give her a reason to stand out and be arrogant. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. We see as Satan begins to work on Eve, it's these three main categories. It was good for food, it was a delight to the eyes, and it was desired to make one wise. In other words, it could satisfy a physical craving, in this case in a forbidden way, but it would satisfy the physical craving in a way that God had forbidden. She was being swayed by cheap vanity. Oh, it's a delight to the eye. Some of this other food is good and it's good for me, but it's not as pretty. I want the beautiful thing. And she was beginning already that early to make decisions based on human pride and human arrogance. And then if we go forward into the New Testament thousands of years later, we see that Jesus was tempted really under these same three categories. And I think the Bible sets this out this way to make a point. It's saying when humans first fell into sin and cursed the world, it was because of these three categories. Good for food, delight to the eyes, desire to make one wise. And humans fell to all three at one time. Christ was tempted by those same three ways, in those sa- under those same three categories, And yet he stood up to it right before he started his ministry. And you find, for example, Jesus being tempted in the wilderness in uh, Matthew chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 4. The very first parts of those two chapter 4s and those two gospels you see. And it was essentially this. Jesus, use your miraculous powers to cure your own hunger. God hasn't given you the authority to use your powers in that way. But use them in that way. Satisfy a physical craving in a forbidden way. Jesus, jump off this high building and let God rescue your physical body. Was playing to his vanity, to his need or desire for popularity that every human seems to have in them. And then he says, Satan says, worship me. And I will give you all the kingdoms of the earth. You will have power and you will have the pride of holding all of that power from all of those kingdoms over others. So it is true that, again, at different times down through history and in different cultures, each of us may have been tempted in a different way. There's no doubt in her long life, Eve would have been tempted in other ways besides the fruit. And in his life, because Satan was so opposed to him, Christ would have been tempted and retempted and retempted again under each of those three categories from different angles, multiple at a time. The Bible only tells us about Eve falling once under those three categories and Jesus holding up once under those three categories. But we know from our human experience, every day they must have both faced multiple tests under those three main broad headings. Man, humans always fall to one of those three, often all three every day. Christ was bombarded under those three and yet always without sin, allowing him to become the propitiation, the acceptable sacrifice 
the great high priest, etc. So when Hebrews 4 says that Christ was tempted or tested in every respect, it means Christ was tempted. Christ was tested. Satan tried to pull to see if there was an evil desire in him that could be turned into a, a conscious sin. Satan tried to do that under the same three categories, under those same main ways that he gets every human to fall. Not that Christ specifically dealt with the same unfair boss or the same unruly child or whatever that that we had to deal with that caused us to slip up and sin. Christ may have dealt with a different specific. The Bible is simply saying, compare Eve, compare it to Christ, compare it to what John's going to tell you about in his letter Humans fail under those three categories, and Jesus stood up under those three categories. So he remains preeminent in all things forever. Thanks for listening. Until next time, this is Andy.